Hey friends, debugging and diagnosing large, distributed, big data sets is hard. It's a time-consuming process, and the Spark Diagnostics Toolkit for HD Insight will help you with your job performance diagnosis and the outer loop of that DevOps process. Maxim Lukyanov is here to show us how it works today on Azure Friday. Hey folks, I'm Scott Hanselman. It's another episode of Azure Friday. We're here learning all about Azure HD Insight and some of the great work that's happening on Spark. How are you, sir? Great. Hi, Scott. Uh, happy to be here. So today we are talking about new Spark UI extensions that we have released on Azure HD Insight. Mm -hmm. And with the help of those tools, uh, developers can uh, finally go and understand how their Spark jobs perform and debug their performance issues. Mm -hmm. And this is the same Spark that if I'm not an Azure customer, it's going to feel familiar with me because it's really Spark. Yeah, it is Apache Spark with some additional tools added to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. How does it work? Uh, well, on HD side, as in Azure, we uh, pride ourselves of trying to deliver best developer tools out there. Mm -hmm. And as Azure HD Insight is a platform for open source big data analytics tools, it was sometimes challenging because there are many open source toolkits and uh, typically open source tools just focus on the core engines and don't deliver uh, some of the more advanced de de uh, developer tools. Mm -hmm. So in HD Insight so far, we have actually uh, accumulated quite a nice array of development tools. Like uh, if you're a developer in Visual Studio Code, you can use Visual Studio Code to write your scripts in Python, in Scala, and submit them to Azure HD Insight. Mm. Uh, if you're kind of a more pro-oriented developer who likes your code to be in Git repo and all of that kind of DevOps process to be set up, you mm -hmm. can also use IntelliJ and Eclipse, and we have plugins for that. So you can build your Scala jobs on your local development environment and then submit them remotely uh, to, the, to the Spark cluster. Nice, so you're not dictating to the customer what they have to use. They can use whatever tool makes them happy and whatever exactly. tool their team uses. Exactly, Th this is all what HD Insight is about. We are where our customers are. And if they prefer um, certain tools, we try to kind of enhance those tools and deliver on those. Mm -hmm. For example, for IntelliJ, uh, we have unique capability where you can not only submit your job from your local laptop to the cluster, mm -hmm. but you can also can attach to this remote cluster and perform distributed debugging of your Spark job. Wow. So you can put a breakpoint and kind of see what's happening. So this kind of loop, what we call inner loop of development, we have so far kind of covered from multiple angles. But what is new today and what we are going to talk to, uh, about today is the outer loop of debugging. Mm -hmm. So developers don't stop once they kind of develop their application or job. They kind of run it in production and have to de debug issues. And what happens is uh, if your job suddenly stops running as fast as it was used to run, you need to go and understand what happened. So this is what uh, we call outer loop. And uh, we build new tools that allow you to kind of uh, at a glance understand what's going on with your job. Okay, so the inner loop is when the developer is iterating very quickly, they're making a change, they debug, they make the change, and they spin, spin, spin until they get it right. Then they put it out into the world, yep. and the world might be their group, their company, their organization. The outer loop begins, that's the DevOps loop, the ongoing health of the job, how that job behaves in the real world, and it's a different iteration. Exactly, and in big data, that outer loop, uh, just as inner loop are very important because mm -hmm. the length of this development cycle determines your productivity. Like imagine if you're a developer who, who, who have to run a job that takes like eight hours to complete. Wow. Like if you need to fix something in this job and try it out again, well, it will take you at least eight hours to, to get kind of a next an insight of uh, whether your fix was successful or not. Mm -hmm. So improving this development look, loop and kind of reducing it in length, it has very direct material impact on developer productivity. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, let's take a look. So how we kind of enhance this outer loop. So we actually build extension for the Spark UI. So in Apache Spark, there is already uh, kind of a nice Spark UI present that mm -hmm. allows you to show some basic stats about your job, what, what it consists of, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also enhanced it with the new capabilities. Let's take a look. So uh, here you can see kind of a familiar Spark UI, and mm -hmm. this is running in a, on a Spark history server. Uh, and uh, this uh, gray tabs is what are uh, available out of the box with Apache Spark. But what we have added is this new blue tabs that allow you kind of a more in-depth look uh, into your job. And the first uh, kind of a look that you can take is graphical representation 
of your overall job uh, how it run over time through stages. So the stages, if you zoom in a little bit, you can see the, the stages uh, represent kind of a computation chunks of your job. Mm -hmm. uh, and the nice part about this UI is that you don't have to kind of uh, guess what's happening with your job. You can actually click a playback button and in a very condensed time, see how your job uh, behaved in real time. You can see this byte spinning and stages completing. And that gives you a, a very intuitive understanding of how your job kind of performed, which stages was the slowest and uh, which stages was the fastest. Wow, it's such a powerful visualization because I know when we're dealing with big data, you're going to be dealing with dozens of stages sometimes. It can be hard to visualize that if it's just in a list or in a table. This is a very intense way of seeing exactly what's going on. And I saw how you were able to back away and look at the big picture, but then also zoom in and see down to the bytes that are happening on reads and writes. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. And the, uh, the powerful thing about big data, remember this eight hour time that takes for job to complete? Mm -hmm. Well, it would take you eight hours to kind of try to watch it, how it, <laughs> how it unrolls. It's not a good show. Yeah, it's not a good show. It takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So here we kind of allowing you to condense time to see it in the fast forward motion. Yeah, yeah. And that's very helpful. Like in this case, let's zoom in a little bit. This, this, was, the, was, this was an example of successful job. It took just 47 seconds. So mm -hmm. that's all great, fairly fast. But what if you have a job, the same job, that suddenly ran 21 minutes? Oh, sh That's a very typical situation. Right. So how do you deal with that? Well, with this uh, visualization, you can now just simply click a playback mm -hmm. and try to understand, so, what happened? So how this job performed? And uh, you can probably notice that nothing is happening in the beginning. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to turn green. Nothing's happened. Nothing's happening. So that's already kind of a very obvious clue that, hey, nothing happened in the beginning. So let's give it a chance to complete. And then you see in the last seconds. Mm, something was blocked for yeah, 20 minutes. Exactly. So for 20 minutes, something was blocked. So now you already know where to look for. It's not. It wasn't the job performance because it was complete in the beginning, in the end, very right. quickly. It was something else. Well, imagine trying to get that understanding, that clarity of what happened by looking through text logs. Exactly. Or uh, at least trying to understand what, what stages were running at which time. Like, yep. It's not only text logs. Oh, you and need the to actually understand. Yeah, yeah, the concurrency of things, indeed. So let's, take a, uh, let's try to, uh, to answer the question, what happened? So in the diagnostic, diagnostic tab, we can <clears throat> take a look at the executor usage analysis tab. Okay. And with that tab, let's zoom in a little bit and remove the idle executors. With that tab, you can see, so this was the time mm -hmm. from 1 a.m. to 1.26 a.m. when our job was running for this 27 minutes. All right. And uh, from that chart uh, of uh, executor usage, you can immediately see that for the majority of the time, the number of allocated executors was zero. So mm -hmm. that means that there was nothing, no resources were assigned to our job okay. until the last moment. And when the executors were assigned, this is a blue line. You see the executors were finally assigned to our job. Uh, it started executing and executed fairly quickly. So finished very quickly. what's going on here? Is it blocked for resources? Exactly. So you answer the question. So the issue with the job was a resource allocation, not the job. It was a resource allocation issue. The job couldn't get the resources that it was asking ah. resource uh, cluster manager for. And therefore, it was waiting for the cluster manager to give it resources. See, that's the really exciting because I don't even know how to do this, but you've given me the tools to visualize it so that I can use my other kind of computer science understanding to be a better uh, HD Insight user. Exactly. And it wasn't rehearsed, so he guessed it right from the first time. Yeah, I mean, there's no script. <laughs> Lower your expectations now. I'm learning all of this along with you. Well, that's pretty cool. OK, so the next thing that we added, uh, so that's just uh, kind of a high level understanding of the dynamics of the job. Okay. So there, there is a next tool that is very typical problem with b big data jobs. Mm -hmm. It's a data skew issue. So in data skew, uh, basically what happens is uh, in a parallel kind of job, there are multiple tasks that execute at the same time. And sometimes one of these tasks takes extraordinarily long time uh, compared to the all other tasks. So that means that uh, in a parallel uh, environment, nothing will be happening and everybody will be waiting for the single task 
uh, running on a single node to complete, and everybody w else will be idle. So if they're dependent tasks, everyone waits for the first one, and if they are done right off the bat, they finish, and then they wait around until the big task ends. Perfect, yes, exactly. So how do you detect that? Well, mm -hmm. in a normal world, again, you would need to go and like try to see the times, uh, time chart of all of these tasks and guess like which, what, what is long and what is not. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we actually have a very automated tool to debug it. So you can click here uh, on the parameters to kind of give you more control and you can say, hey, automatically detect all of the tasks that take longer than five times the average. Mm -hmm. And you see there is no, nothing in the list detected. So it wasn't that severe. Okay. But then you can set it at the default setting of three and now something appears. So there was some skewed stages. And you can see that average data processed by stage was seven megabytes, and this stage uh, processed 28 megabytes. Okay. And in the last stage four, it actually resulted in a significant time spent uh, on executing it uh, instead of uh, average of three seconds. So mm -hmm. what happened here? So we can scroll down and on this chart immediately see the impact of the SKU. So you can see that uh, execution time dependent de is depends on the uh, data that the task is processing. Mm -hmm. And these blue lines, uh, blue dots, is a regular, re regular tasks. You can see that they, uh, they processed a little bit of data mm -hmm. and uh, finished fairly quickly. And this is a red one, which is an outlier. It said, hey, for some reason, you got much more data to process and correspondingly took much longer to, to finish. So here's your clue. You can go and analyze what, what this task was doing. And there are multiple reasons why it could be. Uh, it could be some skewing your keys in your data set, a variety of reasons. But so that's it could be the size thing. of the data, or what we can't see, which is the contents of the data, or something within the data that caused the problem. Exactly. But it also kind of implies a power curve that shows you how long things will take if it is the size of the data. Uh, the, the task data read access as it relates to execution type could imply that if it was 100 megs, it might take minutes and you could kind of build yourself a curve. But then the question is, is it a curve or a line? Well, here, exactly right. You can even uh, detect the trend here. Yeah? Yeah, so yeah, it is yeah. fairly linear trend, at least hopefully it's linear trend that depends on the size of the data. Yeah. But in order to make your uh, data system kind of efficient, you want to split the, your data into uh, chunks that are of the same size. So mm. all of the tasks execute at the same time, so in, you can use your seconds. parallelism of, this, of the system in, in the most efficient way. Okay. So you want to bring this dot back over here, maybe by splitting this data set into more chunks. Uh, but that, again, depends on the content of the data. You would need to kind of change your job to accomplish that. How would you have done this before these visualizations, and before these extensions to, to Spark? Well, there is a, so we can click on this task. Actually, let's wait until the next example, and then we'll see okay. uh, similar, uh, similar kind of problem, and we'll illustrate how you do it in a regular spot. Fantastic. So uh, next example is even more complicated than the previous one. So the data skew, you can kind of understand it. The more data the task processes, mm -hmm. the longer it takes. But right. sometimes uh, it's much more kind of complicated problem. Sometimes the task just takes longer uh, for no apparent reason. Like the data is the same, but it takes just longer. So here's an example of such problematic job. Let's again use the playback button. And you can see how it kind of uh, develops. Everything looks fine. Mm -hmm. Everything goes green. Those two feed in, so stage zero and one are the dependent, stage two is dependent on them. Exactly. And you can see now uh, something got stuck. So the stage two was processing well, but then it got stuck. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, and now we, we can even show you what was weird. So Oh, and like, look, it points out the skew as a little notification. Yeah, exactly. So you don't even need to kind of look for it. You just look at the kind of a status of the job and it will highlight problems for you automatically. So you don't need to even understand or even know about existence of such a problem as time skew. Wow. Uh, it will be brought to your attention by the tools. So let's take a look at the diagnosis now. So in this case, if you look at the data skew, then nothing shows up here. So no data skew. So let's use a time skew. And on the time skew, now we have something detected. Uh, and on a much simpler chart here, uh, well, actually it's the same chart, uh, but uh, it shows that there is a, the, the amount of data that was 
read by this task is the same, mm -hmm. but for some reason it took much longer. Uh, that's an example of the kind of, of the problem. Right. Uh, so it could be a um, uh, very common case here is that uh, you would have a custom UDF, user-defined function, uh, used in this case, and your UDF function would be uh, kind of sensitive to some particular aspects of your data, and mm -hmm. it would take much longer to execute. So there are multiple I reasons see. So for if that. your UDF did a, a poorly written regular expression or some analysis that was not smart and then it got stuck or it, it had uh, a nonlinear uh, compute uh, profile, yep, you, know, exactly. you got stuck in the middle of a regular expression because of that user, user defined function, then you can go and dig into it and bring that skew back down. Yes, exactly. Oh, another regular problem is your uh, UDF, UDF function would actually do some memory operations. Oh, wow. And in Java, it's actually very sensitive of how much and how intensely mm -hmm. your code before, uh, kind of operates with memory. And it may be just stuck on some inefficient kind of memory allocation. Because in big data, you're always dealing with billions mm -hmm. of objects. So if you suddenly started allocating one object for each row, then you're like out of luck. Yep. So that, that's, that's a problem. Now we can take a look at how it uh, looks in the regular Spark UI. So in a regular Spark UI, there is a very nice event timeline. And now that we know that there is a data skew, uh, time skew, you can detect that, hey, this, this task actually uh, is much longer than the other task. So this is a distribution of tasks over time. Mm -hmm. So all of those uh, smaller tasks completed when the green uh, chart completed. Uh, and the, what, and the exec executors, each row is an executor, were basically doing nothing mm -hmm. uh, at the time while this remaining task was executed. So you can, here you can have kind of a feeling of how much resources was uh, wasted uh, during that time. Uh, in our Spark tools, we actually have a better way to estimate that if you go back again into executor usage tab and remove idle executors. Then here you again, you can see in a quantitative manner uh, how many, so the, the blue line here is how much resources were allocated for your job. Mm -hmm. So that's a good line. That means uh, all of the required resources were present. Mm -hmm. And the green one is actually the number of executors that were running. And you can see that for this period of time, only a single executor was running and everything else was idle. So this square is uh, unutilized resources and we even quantify that as an efficiency measure. Mm -hmm. So efficiency tells you uh, how much of the compute that you utilize for the job or actually used for the job to actually run. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're just about out of time. How do I get this though? Like you're giving me, you're teasing me with tools, but I want them today. Are these in, these are in preview? Uh, these are preview tools, but they're available out of the box on Azure Regis Inside clusters. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also find them in the new Azure Data Studio. That is a new, uh, that is a part of new SQL Server 2019. And is this for pe both people who are making new clusters or people who also have existing ones? They'll see these appear automatically? Well, that's a good question. So in order to see these tools, you would need to recreate your cluster. Okay. So it won't appear on your existing cluster kind of uh, one day. You'd need to go and recreate it. It, is, it will be the same version of the cluster that you had before, but mm -hmm. you need to recreate it to kind of get the new bits with the new tools. Okay, and then when this eventually goes general uh, availability, that will still be the same way that we will make a new cluster and it will appear? Uh, that's the purpose of preview. We are looking for feedback from our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, if, but if the feedback that we expect comes in and we don't have issues, we'll make it available in, in a few months, in a couple of months. Fantastic, and where do I go to learn about this? Uh, Azure Region Insight, so just type in Azure Region Insight in your uh, search query and you'll get there. Oh, in, from Azure Portal, uh, you can just click on uh, Azure Region Insight cluster service mm -hmm. uh, and uh, create a, uh, add a add button and create a cluster. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I get into my Spark or my other open source uh, HD Insight uh, control panels. Exactly, so here you type a cluster name and you can select the Spark cluster type. So this new tools is a uh, part of the Spark cluster type. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you showing me that today. Thank you for your time. I am learning all about some of the great new previews and great new visualizations that are coming with Apache Spark sitting on top of HD Insight.